Today, I'm going to show you two techniques to lace a wheel Shimano style with spokes that are too long. It shouldn't work, but it does. <laughs> The first technique involves my version of the Shimano disc lacing standard, which I'd like to say involves two key spokes. Essentially, we lace the drive side first and verify our spoke lengths. The second technique involves the nipple driver, which we'll cover later in the video. So what I'm using is the three cross Shimano rear disc lacing standard with a 32 hole hub. And it's very easy with this hub because there are no logos to line up. I'll add that lacing this way only works with 36 and 32 hole hubs. I'll touch on using this technique with fewer spokes in another video. So what we do is we just grab any hole on the drive side, slide our spoke in with the head on the outside of the flange. Next, we find the corresponding hole on the disc side and count over six holes. Then insert the spoke into the seventh hole. The same as on the drive side with the spoke head showing on the outside of the flange. Now we insert the spokes on either side of the valve hole. The reason for this is that we want to ensure that our spokes aren't going to be too long or inversely too short. In this case, of course, too long. We already know that the spokes are too long since the disc hub has larger flanges than the hub we remove. Therefore, we're going to lace it using a different technique in order to save time. This way, we're going to know whether we should proceed or not and whether we should go and basically look for <laughs> basically look for other spokes. But it's not like when you realize you bought the wrong screws or you ran out of screws and you need to run over to the hardware store and replenish your stock. It's not like that. We're recyclers. We're not building brand new wheels here. We're reusing everything. And this technique helps ensure that we don't waste too much of our time. Now, what we're gonna do here is start our three cross pattern. We count three holes and then insert our spoke into the fourth hole. And we just continue this pattern as per normal. Once we've completed the first set of spokes on the drive side, what we're going to do is flip the wheel over and insert the second set of spokes on the drive side. These, of course, are going to be with the spoke heads facing to the inside of the flange, and they're going to be our cross spokes, so basically our lead spokes. Now, why are we building one side of the wheel first? This is that different technique I mentioned before. We're just ensuring that our recycled spokes are going to fit. We're going to insert our first cross spoke and see how far it protrudes out of the second wall of the rim. In this case, it didn't look too bad, so we're going to continue. But this would be the indicator right here if you notice that the spoke was sticking out way too far. If you can see all the thread, then there's a good chance the spoke will be too long and you should probably abandon the build at this point. Now, in this case, I estimated that the spokes are only a few millimeters too long. I'm going to continue and like I said, and like you saw, I did this check and I wasn't able to see all the spoke threads through the top of the rim. Since the shorter spokes are going to be on the drive side, we're going to build this side first and we're going to see how much slack we have. What we do is just cross over two spokes and then cross underneath the third spoke, skip a hole and insert it into the rim. Now this is basic and I'm not really going to focus on that because YouTube is littered with basic videos on how to lace a wheel and we've progressed from that level. It's a little more advanced and we're trying to fit square pegs into round holes. Simply put, we're not doing it according to the spoke calculators and typical building methods. And we're not building brand new wheels. Now that we have the first side built, the drive side, we're just going to inspect our work. We're going to check our slack and that there are no spokes protruding through the second wall of the rim. So far, I think we're going to be okay. And now that we've established that all the lacing looks good, we'll move on to lacing the rest of the first set on the disc side. This might seem like it's a bit more difficult, but it's really not. We just insert them as per normal. We insert the spokes, skipping every second hole, and they'll slide right through the spokes on the drive side. And if you're having some trouble, you just simply bend the drive side spokes out of the way. There's no tension. So it's super simple, and we just continue along until we finish. And then we just pull the spokes through the other spokes. It doesn't matter if there are little scratches, because we're not really looking to make money off. It's a used rim. So, we continue lacing, counting three rim holes, inserting into the fourth. It's literally a mirror image of the drive side that we just did. It can be a bit confusing your first time, but really, what happens is you just start the pattern and then it'll just lace itself. It really is that simple. There's no easy way, there's no hard way, there's only one way. You do it once, experience it, and then you'll know. We just continue this pattern all the way around until we're done. At a certain point, however, we may experience a bit of difficulty because the nipple goes down under the second wall of the rim and our fingers won't fit. 
So I need my nipple driver in order to fully engage the threads onto the spoke. And that's a good thing because now we know for sure we're not going to have any spoke protrusion that will affect the build and affect the tension. More importantly, we're not going to have any spokes protruding into the tubes. We now have our first set on the disc side laced and we're going to do our second set on the disc side, which is easy as pie. You just flip the wheel over and the spokes slide right into the only holes available. The only way that this is a problem is if we didn't check our work and laced incorrectly. And we really should be aware of this because it happens to the best of us. I have a multitude of fail videos because it happens and the idea is just identify and rectify whatever issue you come across. We'll continue lacing over, over, and under the third spoke before inserting into the only hole in which it will fit. And then we just continue this all the way along. And there's my wife saving the day, finding a missing spoke. I guess I didn't check my work well enough, so I didn't notice. But now I have it, and we'll just finish our crosses. The spoke fits only into that hole, and you can see at this point that the spokes aren't going to be too long. They are longer, but I think it's going to be totally fine. We'll just finish this off, and now it's getting a little tighter. So now that we've finished lacing the entire wheel, we're just going to do a quick inspection here. We can see there's a good amount of slack. There's another technique that's been around forever, and we use it when we absolutely know our spokes are too long. Nipple drivers are designed with a 2mm nib that fits into the top of the nipple. We thread the nipple down until the top of the spoke reaches the nipple flat. This is as far as the driver will thread, so the spokes will be at a uniform point tension-wise. Now, once we've gone around the entire wheel, we're able to check the slack on each spoke. We can then gauge whether the 2 millimeters or so is going to be enough to achieve full tension. At this point, we should be successful, but we'll know for sure until we reach full tension in the next video. <laughs> to watch the full wheel strip video and see how we prepared the rim, click here and I'll catch you on the next one.